This one is a Griffey. Can you do a 360? Yeah. yeah. It's Franklin Gutierrez yeah. with the scramble. Being a Mariner fan and a baseball fan is cool, man. Baseball is cool. So when you wear one of those things, it's you basically saying like, I'm not like everybody else. I'm not regular. So the jerseys are one of one, but they're made for a one of one person. We got to all stick together because at the end of the day, we're all doing it for the same thing, which is the Teal Sleeve Boys. All right, we're here at Cheney Stadium in Tacoma, Washington for a Rainiers game, specifically for the Stitch Head Night. It's going to be Stitch God, a.k.a. Paul, who's going to be hanging out with his fans. He's been doing this for a bit, but he he customizes jerseys, hats. This is one of his hats that he made. We'll see what the community is like. We're going to interview some people to see kind of the story behind their unique items that they have. And then also get a quick interview with Paul, the motive behind Stitch God and, and what that is. And after this video, go check out the Couch GM podcast, episode 37, during which I had on Stitch God to help share the origin story of Stitch God and how he got into customizing jerseys. So I guess with the Stitch at night, they have a giveaway for like a Tacoma Rainier's hat and then also a, a food voucher and stuff. So we're trying to find the hat right now. While in line for the hat, we spotted our first Stitch God jersey of the night. I met uh, Paul Stitch God over at the team store. I believe that was uh, 22. Yeah, that's when I met him. This was the first jersey that I bought. I got one of, I got three of them. Okay. Um, this one is a Griffey. Can you do a 360? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of compliments on this one. This one was my first one, like I said. This was actually a game used Edgar. Really? Uh, you can still kind of see the ones on the back where he took them off. Yeah. And then he put a lot of different, you know, numbers and letters from game used, other game used jerseys, stuff like that. Typical Stitch God jersey. Yeah. And then I also bought one that says the kid on the back. Okay. But it's got a 42 on it. Okay. And then that was perfect for Jackie Robinson Day. Yeah. And then the third and last one that I have is I asked him to make this one for me. And it's actually uh, Andres Munoz. Uh, you know, they used to do the, well, they still do it with the players weekend. Yeah. They used to put the nicknames on the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so his nickname is El Plebe. That's what they call the people from the region that he's from. So he put on the back El Plebe, put his number on there. And then the cool thing about it is the next weekend that I went to the game, I showed it to, to Munoz and uh, he was all about it. He loved it and he signed it for me. Awesome. Um, so yeah. And what's the Stitch God movement? What's it mean to you? A cool community of, you know, like people that collect stuff, you know, one of one. He's all about one of one stuff. He's also probably one of the coolest people that I've met at the ballpark, mm -hmm. you know? Super cool dude, great story behind him. And he's always got a positive attitude. Super nice to everybody and anybody and everybody, you know? Yeah. People that go up there, get his, you know, get their custom jerseys done not only from him, but actually from the store and stuff. He's super nice to everybody and tries to help everybody out. So being a stitch head is it's it's a cool. cool vibe. Yeah, it's a yeah. cool vibe. It's kind of sick, right? Yeah, how did this all happen? The first thought of it came up was literally just so we could like get a bunch of people together that are all like stitch heads or whatever. But then it turned into, wait a minute, Johnny Walton is still in Sacramento who's not playing today by the way okay <laughs> which is definitely how my luck goes but the idea was to kind of just swing it all back around because back when i did one legends link the first time it was with donnie in here and it's kind of just evolved so much since then so i kind of wanted to come back here and i was like you know what What about a sick way to like get everybody together for like a purpose as opposed to like just come here we're going to take a picture so i thought it was a good way to also add in the mix of like this is all about baseball as it is sure. so why not be at a game. So walk me through the Win Legends link. How, how did that start? What, what's all that? I really don't even know how it started. I kind of just just took a picture with Donnie and it was really funny because we were, I was like talking to him over the like the, the tunnel and he was like, yo, he's like, come down here real quick. And I was like, all right. And then the dude like stopped me. He's like, oh, no, you can't go down there. And then Donnie's like, all right, that. So he like hopped over the railing and came into the crowd. We got the picture and then I think I just named it. 
one legend's link and then everything with stitch god i try to keep it like consistent with like how an album would be named or a song would be made or how music would be made so when legends link turned into like a series and we're up to to walter one was i think 22 so i only do like random times where it's something like that but donnie was the first one the reason donnie walton is a big deal for stitch god is because before it was what it is now the page initially was just me kind of showing what i do at safeco and one of the first ones that I remember doing their debut was Donnie Walton. And it was it was Art Warren, too, at the same time. And it was funny because Walton, Warren, it's just a thing with my brain and how it works and everything. And it's one of those things for me where, like, you remember the first guys. But I remember Donnie more than everybody because his whole family was there. His mom, his brother, I think his dad might have been there, his sister, and they were all pumped for his big league debut. Mm -hmm. I did a jersey for it, and then it turned into this thing where his boys came in, and they started calling him Big League Don to me. And I was like, whoa, dude, that's so sick. So as he started playing or whatever, I started, that was the first hashtag that I ever did. And again, in the world that we're in, it's annoying to say that, uh, my first hashtag, but it was the first thing that people caught on to. Now there's Bliss Boys, Teal Sleeve Boys, there's things that are like part of the Stitch God world, and Donnie was the first one. So for me, it's cool because not only did I do the jersey for his first hit, but then he needed to size down, and I did his jersey for his first home run. So it kind of turned into this thing where like we were like on a on a roll together, and then he's just been nothing but cool to me. Like every time he's been here, and then you know, obviously when he got traded, which that was a bummer because that was, again, Jake Fraley might have been before him, but my boss told me like early on, he was like, dude, these guys are going to get traded. And if yeah. you them, it's just going to be a bummer when it's they're emotional. gone. Yeah, it is, dude. And, you know, especially with Ty France just recently, like just not having a guy that you've talked to and, and the, you know, you keep rooting for him. I always say now the Reds are my other team because yeah. Ty France is there now. The and farm that, system for the Reds, kind of. I'm saying, bro. And then even, even, even Marte, I met him before he was anything. Yeah. I met him the same day that I met Julio, and that was when they were, like, 18. Yeah. So that was, like, a weird thing for me, too. But Jake Fraley was the other one. Okay. It's another big one. He's a big part of the Stitch God world. So it's pretty cool, though. And, you know, Donnie not playing today will mean that if he gets a pitch hit opportunity, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. But we're, we're, here for, we're here to represent the Bliss Boys today. Which is, so to someone who doesn't know about the, the Stitch Head, yeah. uh, you know, how would you explain it to someone? It's such a hard question because in my head, when I first started doing these things, it was to put my two favorite things together, which is metal music and, like, being alternative and baseball into one thing, which in, in normal world, there's a baseball guy, there's a metal guy, and they're like different guys. But I wanted to be able to say, no, I've been the same. I've been both of those guys my whole life. So a stitch head now has evolved into whatever you want it to be, mm -hmm. to me. So when you wear one of those things, it's you basically saying like, I'm not like everybody else. I'm not regular. I'm not. And it's and it's different because people will also say that about like, oh, if they wear like designer stuff. But in my head, it's like that's still kind of following other things. Like you're still kind of like, oh, that's popular. OK, I'm into that. Stitch heads will it, it is the whole idea of Stitch God is that and I've, and I've talked about it before where it's it's not me. It's it's a it's a thinking. It's it's where you want to be you. One of one is always my thing. I try. So the jerseys are one of one, but they're made for a one of one person. My other initial thought was people have always kind of the Mariners, ah, whatever. Even when we were when we're good, they they don't cover it on ESPN. Like right now, about even right now, yeah. yeah, they don't talk about the Mariners. And being a Mariner fan isn't cool. And when I was growing up, I'm not from here, so being a Mariner fan was me being different than all the Yankee fans around me and all that. So. To me, it's one of those things where now, because of those mostly Mariner jerseys that are, are scramble jerseys, it's basically going, yeah, and we're cooler than you guys too. <laughs> we got a different, we got a cool thing that we're doing. And it's all kind of about building a community of like being a Mariner fan and a baseball fan is cool, man. Baseball is cool. It might be like old time or whatever, whatever everybody wants to say, but like it's it's the same thing is that when like even Jesse Winker today <laughs> slams his helmet on the ground, that's cool, bro. There's guys that are doing things, Julio, Juan Soto, these guys are cool, man. And it's not the same as a wide receiver, and it's not the same as is like LeBron, of course, but baseball is cool. And I'm trying to do my part to help guide that. I mean, all the way to the point where 
there was mismatched numbers on the players weekend hats this year. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. It's kind of weird how that happened like that. They, they thought uh, your account, they're like, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, we don't want to say that, but <laughs> yeah. it's very convenient, I feel like. So basically, the idea of this whole thing today, we're all here together. That's it. We're going to watch baseball together because it's cool. Yeah. And we're going to have a good time doing it. I really was just like, yo, what would it take to get a, a section where if I say go get a ticket, we're all together. Okay. And that's really as far as it, what it was. When I first moved here, I didn't really know anybody at all. And I would come to a Rainier game by myself and just hang out. And so it's like one of those things, again, full circle moment for me to just do something here is kind of how I wanted it to be. And, you know, if we ever can make it to the big leagues with this, that would be crazy too. It's just a matter of time. Trying, bro. Not if, when. Yeah, exactly. That also came from a conversation with Donnie too, which is kind of funny that, that, that we've come to that point. When we were first chatting, he went down and he said to me, he was like, oh, if I get back up, like we got to link up in Seattle. And I said, if? No, nah, bro, when you come up, you know what I mean? So that turned into like a stitch cod thing too, not if, when. We put that on a couple hats and stuff too, but that also started with Donnie. So again, it's all circling back that a very important piece of the Stitch God world is Donnie Walden. Big League Don. Oh, Donnie, they call him now because he pitches. Donnie. Yeah. Yeah, Donnie he's, he's, pitches. he got two wins in one week. It's like uh, two months ago. Oh, yeah. Bro. Does he hit also or is he just a pitcher now? I don't think he's just a pitcher, but they have <laughs> him pitch and he's he won two games this season. For That's the wild. Cats. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Bro. Yeah. Well, Paul, I mean, congratulations. Dude, thank you. Yeah. This I'm happy is... you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Let's some baseball. What a miss it for the world. Yeah. That's so awesome, bro. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate everybody that I have, that watches this, anything he does. We're all doing this shit together and we're all kind of like, we're all like a snowball, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's so many Mariners creators now and, I mean, and it's all building together. We got to sure. all stick together because at the end of the day, we're all doing it for the same thing, which is the teal sleep boys yeah where, where can people find you you can find me hopefully everywhere one day but i'm i'm wherever you see this you know what i'm saying so no matter no matter where you might think you're gonna run into me if you see that you see something like this right here <laughs> it's one of those things bro where i'm everywhere and that's the point but you can find me at stitch god 716 on instagram and somewhere at mariners game sometimes <laughs> there we have it wherever i can be found you'll find me you'll see me we're here with Michael, a.k.a. Marin Fanatic on Instagram. Yep. Walk me through your, your Instagram page and also the, the Stitch God jersey that you got on the hat. Um, so I started my Instagram page in 2020. It was a COVID project and I've kept up with it, ebbs and flows of it. But um, And then the Stitch God jersey. I met Paul in 2021. He did a couple other jerseys for me, not scrambles. He restitched uh, Roy Holiday Phillies jersey for me, nice. one of my idols growing up, and then restitched uh, Sam Haggerty jersey. He's been one of my favorite players okay. recent and then this one franklin gutierrez yeah. with the scramble yeah so that's kind of the era that i grew up in late 2000s early 2010s gutierrez was so and, good yeah a lot of injuries but overall yeah. Gudi was one of my favorite players he had a lot of big moments kind of in those years and what's the stitch god m movement mean to you he's got his you move you grow in silence and kind of just grow the movement through kind of art and what you are passionate about. So I actually made my own pin here. Stitch God kind of inspired me to create. So when I met him, I didn't do any creating, but since I've made a pin, um, I've made a couple of hats. And I think that's kind of what it's about. It's moving in silence, growing and creating. Shit. Oh, okay. uh, second row, bro. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Sweet, that's a wrap for tonight. Again, shout out to Paul, AKA Stitch God for putting on this event, for taking on the, the journey of starting something like this. And to all of you that I met tonight and your custom one-of-one -one jerseys is really cool. Just kind of the, the message of being yourself, being unique, being a one-of-one -one yourself, work in the shadows and work towards, you know, building this Mariners community that we're all building together. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna do more vlog style content like this and I hope to see you next time.